Let's move on to main topic number four. Alou, what is our fourth main topic today? Main topic number four comes to us from Joachim from Norway, who says, Hello, crew. In my eyes, Zaslev has been doing well so far, and he is not stopping. This time, the axe is not used, but he is giving out keys to the DC kingdom. WB seems to be building up DC as a separate studio and have signed some already trusted people within DC. I'm very excited that we get James Gunn and Peter Safran to lead the future of DC. I feel this would probably lead to less Gunn in Marvel, but damn, am I willing to lose that for this. What are your thoughts about this? And do you also think this means less Gunn in Marvel? Thanks and bring on the filthy. Oh, they, all right, uh, Joaquin, thank you so much for saying that in. And yeah, of course, yesterday, the big, the big news came out that it is now, the search is over, the search is done. DC has found their, quote unquote, their Kevin Feige in the form of two individuals, producer Peter Safran and of course, James Cameron. Or James Cameron. We were just talking about James Cameron. <laughs> Shut up, Wouldn't James. Wouldn't that be ironic? James Gunn. <laughs> Wouldn't that be ironic? James Cameron running DC films, everybody. Oh They're all going to have kids now and stay home. Everyone hang so, out their boots. So James Gunn has taken over, with Peter Safran, has taken over DC films. This comes to us from The Hollywood Reporter, who wrote the following. He says, the hierarchy of power in the DC universe really is changing. In a stunning turn of events, filmmaker James Gunn and producer Peter Safran have been tapped to lead DC, DC's film, television, and animation efforts as co-chairs and co-CEOs of DC Studios, a newly formed division at Warner Brothers that will replace DC Films. Gunn will focus on the creative side of things, while Safran will focus on the business and production side. Both are expected to continue to direct and produce projects, respectively. They will report directly to Zaslav and work closely with Warner Brothers bosses DeLuca and Pamela Abdi. Sources say that the deal runs four years and Gunn will be exclusive, obviously, to DC. The goal is for them not just to be producers, but to truly function as executives, even as Gunn will occasionally hone a movie. And that, of course, comes from The Hollywood Reporter. So a couple of quick things to answer some of the questions in your email. Number one, this does not mean less James Gunn in Marvel. It means no James Gunn in Marvel. He is now the, the, the boss of DC Studios. And again, let's point this out. This is a huge move for Warner Brothers. DC has never been its own division at Warner Brothers. It always fell under just their motion picture chairs, right? Unlike Marvel at, over at Disney, Marvel is its own studio just as much as Pixar is its own studio, so on and so forth. Now they are truly making that happen. And the only people, the only person that the heads of DC Studios now report to is the chairman of the overall company, and that's David Zaslav. So there is actually now less layers of management between James Gunn and the overall head of the company than there is between Kevin Feige and the head of Disney. Even Kevin Feige's got two or three layers now between him and the top dog over there, Bob, uh, Bob Paycheck. So here's the thing. I love this. And I love it for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that I would have been very, very skeptical if they had just said James Gunn was taking over, period. You guys know I love James Gunn. I think James Gunn is Fabulous. I got all the respect in the world for him. I think he's incredible. But just because you're a great director and great story doesn't mean you know what it means to run a corporation and to run a company, right? Different things. So what did they do? They dueled it up. They went and got Peter Safran, who is an experienced long-term producer with Warner Brothers, who has done a lot of their comic book films, but also a lot of other types of films, including horror and all that kind of stuff, and who is a well-respected producer within the realms of Hollywood. So you got that guy and you match him up with James Gunn and you put them as co-chairs and co-CEOs. I'm like, all right, this is not traditional. This is a little unorthodox, but I love taking this swing. I think this is great. They could have done what I expected them to do and I would have been perfectly fine with, gone out, like a lot of professional sports teams, they fire their coach, they got to find a new coach. Well, they go get another coach who was fired from somewhere else and they bring that coach in, right? And I would have been perfectly fine with that. That, that could have worked perfectly good. But instead, they decided to go in an unorthodox route and they have dub, dubbed James Gunn as their new czar, creatively. That, to me, is incredible. 
James Gunn has single-handedly, he's delivered the best DC television show, all due respect to, you know, Arrow and Smallville and all that kind of stuff. But he has produced the single greatest television show that DC's ever had in Peacemaker. It was the number one show in the world. He's produced, in my estimation, the second best movie of the DCEU in his version of The Suicide Squad. He's obviously been in a lot of talks with the higher-ups. We've talked a lot over the past year about all these discussions that he's having with the heads of Warner Brothers and all that kind of stuff about other projects and developing this and developing that and all that kind of stuff. You're talking about a guy with not just roots in comic books and all that kind of stuff. This is a guy who had roots with trauma and like all different types of weird and incredible things. And most importantly here, let's not forget that he was basically anointed Kevin Feige's right-hand guy. He was going to be, until the tweet gate happened, he was going to be the guy that was going to oversee and kind of run the intergalactic aspect of the MCU. And in many ways, he was going to function as, as Feige's right-hand guy. So Feige knew he was the guy to do it. Oh, by the way, do you know who fired James Gunn from Marvel? Alan Shore. You know who's now the lead consultant at Warner Brothers who just hired James Gunn? Alan Shore. Horn. 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 Why, I, I Alan think Shore is James Spader's it's from character. Boston yeah. Legal. Boston. Yeah, sorry about that. that Alan Shore, awesome. ladies and gentlemen. He just walked in and fired With him. Vice President Denny Crane. Well, at least they had good Crane's legal representation when they did it. <laughs> Denny like, Crane. You're fired. So you Alan Horn, sorry, the great Alan Horn, <laughs> who yeah. I adore, which, of course, we talked about this on Open Mic yesterday. It makes me put on my little tinfoil hat conspiracy theory what if this is a long laid plan with alan horn go back now what was five years ago whatever alan horn says you know james i'm only going to be here for a while longer and i'll probably go over to another studio what if we fire you and then open the way for you to come and get a higher no obviously that's not what happened i'm just playing tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist but it does show a couple of things. I mean, Alan Horn has always loved, like we knew Alan Horn and James Gunn patched all that thing up. That's why they were able to bring James Gunn back to Marvel to finish and do Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special and all that kind of stuff. You know, Alan Horn was Kevin Feige's boss. So he knows how Kevin Feige thinks about James Gunn. He knows what James Gunn brings to the table. And I'm absolutely sure that he was probably in David Zaslav's ear and saying, James Gunn is a dude with vision. We were promoting him to be Kevin Feige's right-hand guy. This guy knows what he's doing. He, you know, he had his problems with the Twitter Twitter gate stuff. We got all that put behind us. He's the guy. I just think this is fantastic news. Does this automatically mean things are going to be great and rosy? No, it could be a disaster. This this could work out terribly. But one of the things I said on open mic yesterday is all you can do is make the right decisions. And then sometimes the results are going to be out of your hands. You got pocket aces in poker, go all in. You still might lose, but it was the right move to go all in with pocket aces pre-flop. So you do it. So we'll see how this works out. Anyway, Rob, you know, we heard this news. This is unexpected. It's unorthodox. But I see a lot of upside to this. I don't know. How do you feel about this? Oh. Guys, we want to take a moment and thank a sponsor of today's video, Wondery, and their new podcast, the official Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power podcast. Guys, it's time to go deeper into the canals of Numenor, the mines of khazad and more with the official The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power podcast. Host Felicia Day and several special guests provide an inside look at the groundbreaking series and what it took to bring Middle-earth to life. Each episode of the official podcast features exclusive interviews with the series showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, including the very first full breakdown of the incredible season finale. Felicia also goes behind the scenes with the cast and crew to bring you jaw-dropping stories and Easter eggs that you won't want to miss. So watch The Rings of Power on Prime Video and listen to all eight episodes of the official The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power podcast for free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app now. Well, I think it makes incredible sense. I mean, Peter Safran, like Kevin Feige, has produced movies for over 20 years now. One of the things that Peter Safran has going for him is he has a longstanding relationship. He produced the entire Conjuring Universe series. Yes, he did. Yeah, the Conjuring movies, The Nun, Annabelle creation, and Annabelle. So he also has deep ties with James Wan. He produced Aquaman 1. He's producing Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom. So 
you now have not just Peter Safran and James Gunn, you have one of their most successful other directors in James Wan, who made a billion dollar superhero movie with Peter Safran and his entire universe of Conjuring movies. So you've now solidified a man that is respected by two of the biggest filmmakers at DC. Things like what happened in the Swamp Thing TV series that James Wan was producing probably won't happen. So you now have a group of people that are both creatives and bean counters all together charting the course of what they want to do. James Gunn's probably going to make two giant movies. I would be very surprised not if it's announced in the next month or two he's directing Superman. Because that's what he should be doing. But do you With think Henry he Cavill, a- he's going so Henry Cavill, they've already teed it up. James Wan's already saying, you know, isn't it great Peter Safran and James uh, James Gunn's taking over? Henry Cavill's like, watch out, there's going to be more Superman. Who uh, James Gunn is a huge DC fan. And you think he can be an executive and a director at well, the same he, time? But he's, that, well, yeah, they're be, saying in the report that he's still going to continue he, to direct. Ooh, probably not as much, though. He already, they were already advising David Zaslav about getting people like Dan Lin to come. So they were already consulting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's all, James Gunn's already Peacemaker, whatever other spinoffs they're doing. Whatever their plan was, they already have it laid out. We just don't know what it is yet. Well, it so, makes it makes sense too, though, right? Because I guess, like John was saying, or in the article saying, he's CEO over creative. It's not about production and the other stuff too. But, so yeah, uh, but Peter Safran's producing this. He also is yeah. producing the Shazam movies. Yeah. So you think that they haven't made their plans with Dwayne Johnson and Black Adam? All of this stuff is moving forward, and I see at least the next four years at DC is going to be incredibly exciting and i wouldn't be surprised if the next two or three months we're going to see huge you talk about bombs dropping at d23 they didn't we're going to see it at warner brothers they're going to hit the ground running these guys start november 1st that's next week so as soon as they start man they're not going to sit around and twiddle their thumbs for six months like we never saw anything from jj abrams in the next six months we're going to see the next four years of what dc is doing charted out and they're going to begin production by the way jonathan brings up an interesting question that I'm sure a lot of people are thinking it's like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute how can James Gunn both be the CEO and chairman of DC Studios and direct a film there is precedence uh just go back to Pixar John Lasseter mm-hmm. was the head that, which chief is what they're pointing to yep of both Man. Disney animation and Pixar and he would still then come down out of the top office and actually direct Cars, Cars 2. Things. So there is precedent for that. Also, I wanted to point out that Peter Safran and James Gunn go all the way back to 2008. They might even go back further than that. But Peter Safran produced James Gunn's amazing, horribly underrated web series, PG Porn. <laughs> that is, if you've never seen PG Porn, like the one with Nathan Fillion as the construction worker. Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm just here to drill things. I mean, that it is one of the funniest things I've ever seen, but they probably go back even they further They go back that. even further because I was the associate producer of a movie James Gunn wrote and starred in that Peter Safran was the executive producer of called The Specials. I was going to say, did he produce The Specials? He, he was the exec- co-executive producer of The Specials. James Gunn wrote it. He played my new man. Sean Gunn was in it. You know, and we did that right after Free Enterprise. We literally we started shooting that in nine in two thousand, I think. Anyway, Chris, you hear about this? I mean, this was stunning. This this pretty much shakes yeah. the whole comic book movie world. But what are your takes on this? Oh, the Lasseter point was what I was going to bring up. I was like, dang it, that was my thing that I was going to say. <laughs> um, you know, I was I was surprised though when it first was announced because when we've talked about this in the past, I thought you know, well, James Gunn just wants to direct. That's what he wants to do. But this obviously is going to be able to hopefully strike a balance for him of being able to do this and still create his films. I'm really interested to see where this takes DC as a whole, though, right? Because kind of the the last men standing, if you will, in terms of television and animation in television, television for them are our more kind of blue comedies or our blue superhero stories, right? Peacemaker, um, Harley Quinn, the animated series, those sort of things. So I'm interested to see if we have more of that kind of vibe moving forward to things that skew a little more adult in DC in terms of humor, at least. I also think this means that even though they are, you know, some calculated risk takers here, I think we're going to do some really big swings in terms of characters. You know, this is the guy who did a Guardians movie when all of us were saying, Guardians of the Galaxy? That's a B-side, man. That's not going to play to this camera. And it did. 
Peacemaker, you know, that was another one. You want to do a show about Peacemaker after what he did? I thought it was a, I admit, I thought it was a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. and, and he knocked awesome. it out of the park, right? You know, he takes big risks that really, really pay off. So I'm excited to see some really fun different characters pop up in here give us lobo man you'd be so good at it you'd do such a good lobo movie yeah, oh. I mean, what about all the vertigo like animal man yes. kid eternity shade mm -hmm. the changing man all that crazy stuff and you know james gunn also goes back as a writer so probably knows alan horn from when he was writing like scooby-doo yeah he's gonna give so, me a batman beyond movie baby he's gonna I, do it more yes. so than ever i was thinking yeah. that, that we're closer to a batman beyond series movie whatever Lou, your team batman ever. beyond too yes Suck it, John! Yes. What? Yeah, we, and yet, oh who's been right for the last 10 years? Wolf you know? What? You know? You only yes. have to be wrong once. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I can be right for 10 years. It doesn't matter. So, listen, someday happen. there's going to be a Batman Beyond. Someday Shway. there will be. We're going to see some big moves. Soon, hopefully. I think sooner than rather yeah. than later. Yeah, and I think one of the common complaints I can already hear from some people is, I don't want all DC to be Peacemaker. For sure. It, it's it's not. Right. James Gunn is going to be the overall executive. He ain't going to be directing every movie. He's not going to be. He's going to have filmmakers come in and he's going to foster and encourage their individual visions that right. fall, like Kevin Feige, that fall in line with James Gunn's overall direction of what the of what this is. And if, you know, somebody wrote in a little bit earlier or called in, I think it was James on the hotline called in and, and said, you know, how important is it to be a big fan of the source material? Well, if that is a big deal to you, then this is your day. Because James Gunn is deep cut. Deep cut. Schnepp once told us about, he, Schnepp had met James Gunn, and, and like even Schnepp said, this guy knows comics. Oh, yeah. like, you, like he is an encyclopedia of comic book knowledge. And he's got a reverence, not just for the wild polka dot man, which by the way, look at what he did with polka dot man. But not just that stuff, but of the, of the more established mainstay, the darker, the grittier. I am very excited. And again, he worked with Kevin Feige for years. So he's got a solid understanding of what he's doing here. Not only that, James Gunn is a novelist. He wrote a novel, a very dark novel that I recommend called The Toy Collector. That, I mean, it's a hardcover novel. So James Gunn, he's, they already know what they're going to do. I mean, I'm sure that the calls have been made. It's just they can't say it yet. But the fact that they're starting November, there's a reason why this starts November 1st. They're not waiting. No. And and this has been in the works for a while. By the way, one interesting side note to this whole story is that the Joker uh, sequel is going to be under the Warner Brothers Pictures umbrella, not under the DC Studios umbrella. That makes sense for a couple of reasons, but one of the most important ones is they've already gone into production yeah. on Joker 2, and James Gunn isn't, isn't even installed as the thing yet. So it's been shepherded under Warner Brothers Pictures since the first one. They're going to keep it under there. Look for the Batman 2, though, with Matt Reeves to come under the DC Studios banner at that point. But I, I just think this is incredibly exciting news. Uh, again, I would have been a little bit more pessimistic if it was just James, but doing it, James, with Peter Safran together, this could be great. Could be a disaster, but I think this was a really bold, fantastic decision on their part, and I cannot wait to see what James Gunn is going to do with the DC Universe. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. What do you think about this earth-shaking news that DC now has their czars? It's Peter Safran and James Gunn. How do you feel about that? Do you have some concerns or worries about it? Maybe you're not a big fan. Maybe you love it like I do. Whatever you guys think, Jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.